Hi all, please come and sit. Take whatever support. I'm going to sit on one of my bricks this morning. And come and cross your legs the least customary way. Take your hands and cup them over your knees and just bring your awareness down to the very base of your pose, your legs, your feet, your buttocks. And just check that they're equally resting down and if needs be, adjust the buttock flesh, adjust the feet away from the hips so that the knees come to settle. And if this is uncomfortable, take a blanket between the knees and the inner feet. And with the hands cupped over the knees, just align the whole of the trunk, right from the crown of the head to the pelvic floor, bringing the shoulders over the hips so that the spine reaches up vertically in a dignified, stable manner. We're going to be working on shoulders and shoulder issues in this class. So for those of you with shoulder problems, this might be a class that you can repeat frequently until the shoulders settle and build up some strength, some stability. So in settling the hands, broaden the shoulders. Feel as if you ease the shoulder heads away from the ears and then let the shoulders broadly just release down the back body, like a sheet of water from the shoulders through the broadness of the shoulder blades. And let the shoulder blades settle like hands onto the back ribs. And just check in settling those hands of the shoulder blades, do you tend to press the outer upper shoulder blades more into the body the lower outer shoulder blades, the inner lower shoulder blades, or the inner upper shoulder blades. Can you allow them to settle equally? So feel as if, I know the shoulder blades are like tri inverted triangles, but feel as if you have four corners to the shoulder blades and that they can rest equally onto the back. And to allow them to rest equally onto the back, broaden your collarbones a little more and inflate the inner collarbones. So this little area that as we age tends to deepen and create great fosses or holes almost, we want to feel as if we inflating that area, like you inflating a balloon so that the skin fiber is almost puffed out there and you roll these broad collarbones to the shoulders, the shoulders down the back, and then once more, settling the shoulder blades into the back body. Feel that by doing that, you also then activate those last three thoracic vertebra from about nine to 12. That area I so often refer to the dorsal thoracic. Can you ease that into the back body? Bring the palms into Atmanjali Mudra and create a little space between the heart area and the heel of the palms. So you're not pressing the palms into the back because that in turn allows the shoulders to roll forward. You want the heart area to spread and open towards the heel of the palm. So there's a little triangular space here too. Close the eyes. Bring your awareness back to the shoulders, allowing the collarbones, the shoulders, the shoulder blades to broaden from the medial line. And then inflating the inner collarbones, roll the shoulders down, the shoulder blades broadly down the back body, settling into the back ribs. Feel all those actions also contribute to opening the inner walls of the chest so that as you breathe in, there's a sense of inner space in the chest area. As you breathe out, can you maintain that space? 
relaxing the shoulders with each exhalation, softening the shoulder blades onto the back ribs with each exhalation. Release the lower jaw. Soften the inner walls of the throat. And allow the back of the neck to ease up off the top of the shoulders, the base of the skull to ease up off the top of the spine. So that in the sitting, there's a deep awareness of the whole shoulder, neck, head area. But a sense of awareness of letting go any habitual gripping and holding. So it's as, almost as if the bony structure and the ribs, the shoulders, the neck, skull, soften somewhat. This allowing the soft flow of the breath as you breathe in, as you breathe out. And in the settling into the softness, can you allow a sense of that soft vibration of arm to flow through these areas, resonating, vibrating. Maybe as I say, sometimes on the inhale, sometimes the exhale, Sometimes both, just be aware of how it resonates for you. And then exhale completely. Keeping the lift and the openness of the sternum bone, the release of the shoulders, the shoulder blades down the back. Release the back of your neck and bring your chin to your chest. But lift the sternum, lift the collarbones. So the back of the neck softens, lengthens, releases a little more. Tongue to the floor of the mouth. Make your own inner acknowledgements. as you prepare yourself for your practice today. Rest the back of your hands onto your inner knees. Raise your head, open your eyes. Take one of your belts and make your belt into as large a loop as possible. So making it as long as possible. Come and stand in Tadasana. I'm going to take this loop and put it on like a jacket. So in closing the loop, you want to wrap it around one arm, wrap it around the other arm. Then you have this long loop. You're going to have the crossbar. Take your hand behind you and take that long loop and thread it inside the crossbar. So you have a setup that looks like that. So just to demonstrate where my belt is sitting is where the trapezius muscles flow over the shoulders. We want to pull those down to the lower trapezius in this area, that dorsal thoracic area. So as you do this, can you tuck the belt closer to the neck? There's the deltoid area, and you don't want to be on the deltoids. You want to be on the trapezius close to the neck. And then once you've got that, really pull the belt so that you tighten this crossbar. From there, taking your belt, so if you can see the belt is hanging like that now, one to each side, but now what you want to do is you want to pull the left side of the belt to the right and the right side of the belt to the left. Then hook your thumbs into the belt, wherever it works for you, and start to pull that belt, not only down, but sideways. 
so that you get the pull of the upper trapezius coming down and with that sideways pull you get a sense of being able to broaden your shoulder blades onto the backwards. As we do that and we start to pull down more and more there tends to be a tendency of the lower front ribs and the lumbar spine to collapse forward. Can you spread the lower front ribs, cinch these lower side ribs back, and ease the lumbar, that back waist, ease it back into the space behind you. And then just be there standing, pulling more and more. See which shoulder for you needs to pull more. So I know, for example, this shoulder of mine needs more work. So this hand might come a little further forward than the other hand. But just check what for you brings about a balance in your shoulders. And come and stand, feet apart in Tadasan. Spread the lower front ribs, ease those side ribs back, lumbar back, so that the whole of the body comes to work for the shoulders. Making the shoulders, the shoulder blades, the neck area, the focal part for today, because they're all connected. And various issues, be it arthritis, be it rotator cuff problems, be it instability, because it, the shoulder joint is a very shallow joint and some people more open than others. So there could be a tendency to dislocate in the shoulder joint. So we want to build up not only flexibility, but strength in that area. So all these poses, if you do have shoulder, neck, upper back issues, Please just work to your capacity today. I will be going through them and you will see some will work more for you, some less. So those are the ones you need to work on more. Keep pulling that belt. You're making this imprint. You're making this setting up the somatic memory in the cellular structure. So just because we here, don't ease off. The minute you feel you're easing off, pull a little more. I know, for example, just demonstrating on my body, this is where my, and just aside, scoliosis is in 99% of us. So my shoulder blade tends to pop out and therefore the shoulder rolls forward. That's why I need to pull the shoulder more and move the shoulder blade into the back so that these side ribs, this lung, can open more. So just be aware of your asymmetry in your body. And then from that, release. Just stand for a moment, bring your feet together and see already has there been a little change in the habitual way of your posture, of your shoulders, shoulder blades, neck area. And then remove your jacket and come and lie down on the floor and have a brick. If you don't have bricks, please take a foam. But I think by now you've all got your props. Come and lie down, feet together, knees together. And just be there with the arms out to about 45 degrees. Once more, spread the collarbones, the shoulders. And like you've got hands on the shoulders, pressing the shoulders down to the floor. Feel how the outer shoulder blades will move down, but there's a tendency when you press here that the inner lower shoulder blades move into the back. And that's great because it opens the inner walls of the chest. If our shoulders are very tight and we've got problems, they're going to roll up and those inner lower shoulder blades are going to pump into the floor. So can you press your shoulders down outer shoulder blades down and now bring those inner lower shoulder blades into the back without pumping up here. So side, front ribs spread, side ribs move back, lumbar moves back. There's that sense of that dorsal thoracic moving into the back. Once you've pressed the shoulders down, 
take the arms and extend them to the side. And now making the shoulders heavy, pressing them into the floor, make the neck spine subtly lighter and lengthen and ease the back of the neck to the base of the skull and bring your chin slightly to your chest so that your head is in neutral. And you can check that your head is in neutral by when the eyes are sinking back, the, head, the eyes are looking directly up to the ceiling. So, some of you might have severe shoulder problems where they're rolling and the head tilts back like that. Please, for today, take yourself either, I prefer, a blanket for this sort of thing because then you can roll the blanket up to whatever height you might need. So pull the blanket in until you bring your head to neutral but your shoulders can sink down. So more importantly that the head, the neck can relax. Shoulders pressing down to bring the inner shoulder blades into the back. From there, in that neutral state, take your brick and put your brick into the heel of the palm. So it's at the wrist and the heel of the palm and stretch your brick up, stretch your fingers up, turn your inner elbows to look at each other and now jam your shoulders into your shoulder socket. So really draw back the shoulders into the shoulder socket. Squeeze your outer upper arms to the bone and let your inner upper arms, as if they're rolling towards the floor, start to take the arms over the head. Pause for a moment. Press the shoulders down and into the shoulder socket. So inner arms lengthen to the brick, outer upper arms draw back into the shoulders. Can you stretch the arms a little further? Lock those elbows, squeeze the brick, squeeze your outer upper arms. As you come a little further, what's happening to those side ribs, that lumbar spine? So the inner lower shoulder blades move into the back, but the lumbar spine and those lower side ribs keep moving back. And keep going, keep going until you come to the place where you can't go any further. Squeeze the brick, squeeze the outer upper arms, and take your inner upper arms as if down to the floor. Don't come all the way down to the floor for today. Pause where you're just hovering. So you're having to work your shoulders and your arms. For some of you, this might be too far. You can only go this far. Don't go into that area of instinctive bad pain. We all know what it is. Don't go there. So this is gradually a work in progress to be able to go further and further and further. But no going all the way down to the floor today. Just pause a little way off the floor, even if your shoulders are open. Outer shoulder blades, press into the floor. Inner, lower shoulder blades into the back. Spread those lower front ribs. Cinch the lower side ribs down, lumbar back, so that the chest area, the thoracic diaphragm is in neutral. Tongue into the floor of the mouth. Inner walls of the throat, soft. Lower jaw, release. Just check where you grip. And from there, bring the arms up. And release and just relax. For all of us, the shoulders are going to be aching. From there, roll over to your side, come up and get yourself a prop of either two foams, you can even use your bolster. And I'm going to demonstrate to this side to start with. So come and lie down just as you were doing. Press the shoulders down, tuck the knees up and now. Taking your shoulders into the floor, press the shoulders down, keeping your right shoulder onto the floor as much as you can, your right shoulder blade onto the floor and take the legs over to the opposite side. So in this case, my left shoulder. I'm going to do it here now 
so that you can see. So pressing my shoulders into the floor, tucking my knees up, I'm going to go over to the right. But this shoulder, this shoulder blade must stay as they were when I was centered. Press that altar, left shoulder blade into the floor. So all going to the right. Press your right, your left shoulder into the floor. Make the left shoulder and shoulder blade heavy. Make the, the right shoulder blade light. And breathe. Check where you're gripping. Can you soften the abdomen? Turn it from right to left. Head in central, tongue in neutral. Pressing that outer left shoulder blade and left shoulder into the floor. Make this heavy. And then from there, draw the legs up. And we're going to go to the other side. So take your props, your foams, your bolster. Pressing the shoulders down, make the neck spine light. Now really root that outer right shoulder blade, right shoulder down, and take your legs to the left. This support is nice for those of you that have very open shoulders. You can go all the way down, but ensure that this right shoulder, shoulder blade, is heavier than the left. I'm just demonstrating for those of you that um, need a support. If you need to go higher, put three folds. Press that outer right shoulder blade as if you're pulling it down to the floor. Yes, it's going to slightly lift. But can you press it down? But root your right shoulder into the floor. Don't let it lift. So these legs might be right up here. You just have to hold them there. Press the shoulder down. And then release. Let go. And just come back to center. Come back to neutral. Relax your shoulders. Just see, is there any somatic memory that's building up that is starting to change how the shoulders are? In other words, that they're resting back and down rather than pumping up. From there, take your arms like cactus branches and just keeping your shoulders, your elbows onto the floor, start to slide your hands up as if you're going to do a big circle and come to touch your fingers, but keep the shoulders onto the floor. Just for those of you with shoulder issues, this can make a huge difference. Just go to where you're able to. You love the shoulder blades spread when you do this. And then release and roll over to your right and come standing up. So we're going to start off with that very last action. So come and stand up against your wall. Take the hands into cactus branches like you had now on the floor. Press the sh shoulder heads into the wall. The outer shoulder blades, the lower side ribs and the lumbar spine move into the wall. Just like you were doing into the floor. So Rest into that space behind you, but bring the inner lower shoulder blades into the back. And now from there, keep the upper arms pressing into the wall and bring your arms up. Pause for a moment. Press those shoulders, side ribs, outer shoulder blades back. Can you go a little more until you're tipping the fingers? For those of you that don't have shoulder issues, you might wonder why you're doing this. But isn't that a gift? that you're able to and that there's no issue here. For those of us with shoulder issues, this can be impossible and we might only be there. So just stay for a while. Press the shoulder heads back, outer shoulder blades back, lumbar back, and then from there, release, let go. And just come and stand in Tadasana. Press the shoulder heads back. So you can see once more the tendency, if the shoulders are in issues, to come forwards. Keep remembering that wall behind you. 
Keep bringing these lower side ribs, the outer shoulder blades back. And from there, stretching into your inner fingers, especially the little finger, lock your elbows. So take that little finger away and back to open your inner elbow joint. And then from there, resisting your outer upper arm to the bone, Feel as if your inner other arm is going to lift this arm to the side. And don't go more than about 40 degrees. So squeeze the outer upper arms to the bone. Shoulders back. Inflate those inner collarbones. Inner upper arms press to the bone. So there's a play between the outer upper arms in and the inner upper arms out. This works on the inner shoulder blade area. And it starts to strengthen it. You can feel how it starts moving into the inner body. So for people with rotator cuff problems, this is a good one to do, to start building up the inner and the outer shoulder blade. And I mean inner from in, internally and outer. So the intra and the supra spines. And from their release. So that might be a good pose for you to do for rotator cuff issues. From there, come and stand side long onto the wall, feet together, and then take your arm up. <clears throat> so we've got the right arm against the wall now. As you come up, turn this palm and take it up to 12 o'clock. Check that you're still in Tadasan. Remember, side ribs, these lower side ribs back. Lumber back into its natural curve so the abdomen settles back. And now, draw this upper arm into the shoulder socket and start to stretch this arm back. See where it goes for you until it becomes untenable. Can you pause at sort of between one and two o'clock? Take your left hand and grip your left side hips and pull them forward. Now reach into your right hand. Lock your right elbow and roll your right shoulder back. Turn your legs and your feet away from the wall. Turn your head and look away. This can be a killer for shoulder problems. But do be higher than your shoulder. Press the palm away. Roll that right shoulder back and down. Don't let it come forward. Dig that outer right shoulder blade into the back. Bring your head up to center. Turn your feet to center. Bring this arm down. Don't bring it forwards. You can stand for a moment. Relax that right shoulder. Roll it back and down. And let's do the other side. So left side. Tadasan, lower back, side ribs move back so this can spread and soften. We don't want to pump this up and out and harden it. Ruchi used to say when we do this sort of thing, we're, all we're doing is pumping up the ego. So he says stay neutral, number into its natural curve. Stretch your left arm forward along the wall and as you go up, Gradually start to turn the palm, retract that left upper arm into the shoulder socket, and now start to take that arm back without letting this collapse forward. So you have to go where it works for you. So can you go between 11 and 10 o'clock? Take your right hand and grip your right left side ribs, pull them forward. Turn your hips, your legs, your feet away from the wall. Turn your head. Now press that left hand into the wall. Fully open your left elbow and roll that left shoulder back. Feel what wants to cooperate. Very difficult when we press the hand, the shoulder wants to roll forward. When we roll the shoulder back, the hand wants to lift away from the wall. Lock that elbow. Turn. Stretch, feel that inner upper arm stretch. And then step your feet to center. Release that arm back. 
and down and we stand roll the shoulders back do you see any difference is there a tendency to want to start keeping those shoulders more in the back plane of the body than letting them go back to their old habits from that come and stand in tadasan and take your break i'm going to kneel down for this otherwise you're not going to be able to see what my hands are doing but it's exactly what you did on the floor so have your feet i'll start off here have your feet hip width take your brick into the wrist the heel of the palm area and stretch your arms forward so squeezing the brick you want to squeeze these outer upper arms to the bone and as you take the arms up, it's as if these inner upper arms want to roll up and back to the wall. That's what's taking you back. So from there, I'm going to kneel. You remain standing. Squeeze the brick. Squeeze your outer upper arms. And then from there, stretching into the fingertips. So the inner arms stretch away from you. The outer upper arms draw the shoulders back into the socket. I mean to Urva Hastasa. Squeeze the brick, squeeze the outer upper arms. What's happened to your lower front ribs? Is the head pumping forward? Can you keep it back in neutral? Spread your lumbar spine so the abdomen can spread back. Stretching to the tip of the fingers, see which elbow wants to collapse, which arm is weaker. Can you squeeze equally, taking those arms back as far as your trunk can stay in neutral? From there, bring the arms forward and down. So wonderful work to build up these upper arm muscles and also settle and build up and strengthen all these muscles around the shoulders and the upper back that are connected. Remember, after all, we are one. We're going to repeat that once more. So from there, aligning the spine, squeeze the brick, squeeze your outer upper arms to the bone and retract your upper arms into the shoulder socket. So once more, it's that action of the shoulders that they were pressing into the floor. Outer shoulder blades pressing into the floor, lower side ribs pressing back. And from there, lengthen your inner upper arms and take the arms up. Stretch that brick, lift that brick, but soften the side walls of the throat, soften the tongue, release the grip of the lower jaw, lift up, take those inner upper arms further and further back, breathe, squeeze the brick, and release your arms, and put the brick down. Come and kneel down onto all fours, preparing for Ardo Mukha Sanasa. So, for those of you with shoulder problems, turn your palms out to start with. You can see I've got my hands quite wide. So, take just the palm of the hand onto the mat so that this web here between the thumb and the index finger will form a parallel line with the edge of the mat. Have your hands wide for the moment. Now, press down into the root of the index finger and the thumb. So take the weight away from your little finger side of your hand. Take your weight off your, especially your outer wrist by pressing into the root of that index finger. Really press it down. Suction it into the floor. Roll your inner upper arm. So this was like you were doing with the brick. You were taking that brick there. Take the, uh, take the inner upper arms out and squeeze the outer upper arms to the bone. Retract your upper arms into the shoulder socket without collapsing and sinking into the back. So there's a spreading of the shoulder blades as you bring the shoulders into the back. Tuck your toes under. Lift your hips, 
Extend the inner arms all the way through to the root of the index finger. Draw your outer upper arms to the bone. Now move those shoulder blades deeply into the back. Keep onto the ball of the foot for the moment. Take your shoulder blades, outer, inner, lower, upper, into the body. Go further and further and further. Now, moving your front thighs back, descend your heels, but ascend your buttocks. What happened to those shoulder blades as you brought the heels down and lifted your buttocks? Move the outer, inner, lower, upper shoulder blades deeper into the back. Spread your lower front ribs. Cinch your lower side ribs back. Lumber into its natural curve so the abdomen settles back. Pump open your armpits. Squeeze your outer upper arms and release and come down. So, for some of us, that could work. Some of us, it's going to be extremely painful or you feel that what happens are the elbows suddenly bending? One elbow might bend, one might remain straight. So take your belt and make a smallish loop with your belt, just slightly narrower than your shoulders. You can see I've hooked my thumb and it's ever so slightly narrower than my shoulders. Take the belt and put it just above your elbow joint so that when you come into dog stretch like this, you take your hands as wide as you can so that you're really hitting out onto the belt but your outer upper arms are going to be moving away from the belt so it's like the belts your inner upper arms want to break the buckle but your outer upper arms want to move away as if the belt is hot so from there turn your hands slightly out so bring them a little more to having the index finger parallel now. And then, hit your inner upper arms out, outer upper arms, hit them in, and then from there, retract the upper arms into the shoulder socket and take those shoulder blades to Step your feet back as far as you need to, and now from there, lift your hips, lift your buttocks, descend from the calves to your heels. So all those actions in the leg as per normal, but today focusing on the arms. Hit the inner upper arms out and up to the ceiling. Outer upper arms squeeze to the bone and roll them down to the floor as you take the whole of the shoulder blade through. Pump open your armpits. Press the root of the index finger down. And then from there, release and just come kneeling down and be in Adha Mukha Virasan. Relax your arms, rest your head. You can keep your belt on. And then coming up. Turn your hands slightly uh, completely out. So once more, root the index finger down, hit that elbow down and take your hands. For me, you can see I can take my hands almost off the mat now. Retract the upper arm into the shoulder socket without collapsing the shoulder blades. Let them spread across those back ribs. Now just walk back. We're not going to go up in these particular actions but this for people with intense shoulder problems please be careful those of you with shoulders dislocate but these are to access all those shoulder muscles so that we can start stabilizing and strengthening them now turn the palms to face each other hitting out onto that belt have the middle finger pointing each other and take the hands as wide as possible so outer upper arms squeeze in, inner upper arms hit up, like you're going to break the buckle. But the outer upper arms want to move away from the belt and move back. Don't come up with these. Ultimately, you can. At some stage, when the shoulders feel more stable, you can start doing Adha Mukha Svanasan. For today, we're just going to keep moving back and moving back. 
Then from there, turn the whole of the arm back. So now the wrist parallel to the front edge of your mat. Hit the belt out. So you might need to take your hands wide. That's fine. Now, press the heel of the palm down. Press the root of each one of your fingers down. Lovely nerve stretch this. Feel the action. Start to walk back. Open your armpits. Move your shoulder blades into your back, but don't let your wrists slip. And from there, release. So all of these you can repeat, all of these you can hold a little longer. From here, when there is some sense of stability and um, the relief of pain, then you can start going towards building up the strength in this area. And one of the ways to do this is Come up into Ardo Mukha Svanasan. Dog stretch is a wonderful pose to learn how the shoulders should be in the back, how the shoulder blade should be on the back. Collarbones broad and inflated. And from there, pressing back into the heels, retract your upper arms into the shoulder socket and come into Palakasan. Put your knees to the floor for a moment. Retract the upper arms into the shoulder socket, but spread those shoulder blades so they don't sink down, they spread. And the back ribs sort of move to the inner shoulder blades, but the inner shoulder blades onto the back ribs. Now, for those of you that the capacity is there, just lift your knees. Squeeze the outer upper arms to the bone. Root down through the base of the index finger, the thumb. Hold. So if you can, build it up to two minutes. From there, come up. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Move those shoulder blades onto the back body. Plug them onto the back ribs. And from there, step your feet together. And I'm going to face the back first time around for Vashista Sun. So come onto your right hand. Root into the root of the index finger. Retracting the upper arm into the shoulder socket. Move the shoulder blade onto the back. So let it move down the back into the body. So it becomes like scaffolding. And lift your left arm. Squeeze your outer upper arm to the bone. And from there, come back. Feet together. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Shoulder blades broadly onto the back body as you plug your upper arms into the shoulder socket. And from there, come onto the left. Move that left shoulder blade down the back. Glue it onto your back ribs. So this will create great stability, great strength in the whole of that shoulder area. But when the pain is there, acute pain and problems, this is not a good time to do these. This is to build up at a later stage. Part your feet. Ado Mukha Svanasan. See now in your dog stretch. Is there any change? So inner upper arm rotates up and out. Outer upper arm grips the bone. The armpit opens from the stability of that humerus bone moving deep as you can into the shoulder socket. And from there, release, come down. And just relax your arms. Rest your forehead onto the back of the hands. And last pose for today. You've got that belt that you had. Make your loop just slightly bigger. Once more, for those of you that need the blanket for the back of your head to keep the head in neutral, please take it. Lying down, feet slightly apart. Take that loop around the front of your ankles. 
for Setu Bandha Savangasan. So I hook my index finger, middle finger into the loop, feet slightly apart, be here. Now, roll your inner upper arm out, press the shoulder down, outer shoulder blade down, inner shoulder blade into the back. So the next spine is light, the outer shoulder is heavy. Stand into your feet, stand into your outer shoulders, and now come up. Roll your inner upper arms out, even roll your belt out, your fingers out. Press your outer upper arms and your shoulders down. Dig those inner lower shoulder blades into the back and lift up. So everything else working for these shoulders to be pressing down. Heart center, soft, open. Inner walls of the throat, soft, open. Breathe and release, come down. Don't move your shoulders. You, it might be exaggerated, especially for those of you that have got lovely open shoulders. But keep pressing these outer shoulders down and stretch your arms away from you. Press the outer shoulder blades down. Feel how the whole of the chest area is off the floor, the, the thoracic spine is off the floor. Spread your lower front ribs, settle your lower side ribs, your lumbar spine, but keep that dorsal thoracic exaggeratedly into the body. Lift your buttocks and walk your buttocks towards your heels and now stretch your legs one by one away from you. So you firmly onto the outer upper arm. You almost feel that you're rolling onto the thumb side of your hand. Stretch into your heels. Press your shoulders down. Lift your head and check are your legs aligned with that medial plane. Long back neck. Now let the head rest. Relax the arms. Relax the legs. Relax the shoulders, outer shoulder blades, inner shoulder blades, lumbar, abdomen, all of the trunk, the limbs, the trunk, the head. Let go completely. Keeping your eyes closed, just gently bend your elbows, place your palms onto your abdomen and allow the breath to become fuller and deeper as you breathe in. Feel the gentle rise of the palms with the inhalation and the dropping of the palms with the exhalation. Roll your legs towards each other and one by one draw up your legs, feet up to the floor. Rest your shoulders into the earth as you take your right arm over your head and roll completely onto your right. Relax in your shoulders, press down with your left hand and come and sit once more with the legs crossed. Palms in Atman Shri Mudra, eyes softly closed, and just checking for yourself on your shoulders, your upper back, your chest area, your neck, the lower jaw, this whole area that you have focused on. How does it feel now?
and look into your heart, making your own inner acknowledgements. Namaste. So please remember, for those of you that are doing this class, if there are shoulder issues, work slowly, work with care and compassion to your shoulders, your neck, your head area so that gradually things can change. It's no good pushing yourself. That's himsa, that's violence. And you're going into areas that are not conducive to making life better and easier for yourself. So enjoy this practice. Namaste. <laughs>